To me, the ultimate experience in fly fishing is to discover unpressured fish in a new location. This is difficult since even the most remote locations on our planet have been affected by the hand of man. In the world of fly angling, a few overlooked destinations exist that aren't necessarily on the map. This is a story about a location where my friends Will and Eric stumbled upon a flats fishery back in 2022. Their destination was a cluster of remote islands off the east coast of Nicaragua. Little did they know, it is a promised land for anglers in search of unpressured black-tailed devils lurking in the shallow water flats. A year later, we are now returning to see if this all holds true. Our hope is to hold one of these fish resembling a shiny metal trash can lid with pink lips. Whether that happens or not, well, it's up to those little f***ers. To say permit are hard to catch is an understatement. Yo, yes. two, oh, two, oh, there's oh. two, there's two. F Eight F perms F in the last an hour. You need a fly change. Fly change. Fly change. Third boat that's broken down that we're on right now. Let's see what kind of MacGyvering Armando can do this time. <laughs> What up, dude? Good, dude. Good, dog. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Walking through the airport with Eddie. <laughs> Going to Costa Rica first. <laughs> Gonna land there, meet up with Will and Ted. Hop in the van, drive across the border. We have a place to stay in town in Nicaragua. I think we're going to Managua tonight. And then tomorrow, I think we're heading out to the flats to go do some fishing. So this is where the journey really begins. Leaving the US, hopping on a plane. Let's do it. All right, William. Oh, oh. What up, buddy? What up? Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Phelps, what up, dog? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Well, we just got our passports checked. We're at the Costa Rican Nicaraguan border. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Adios. Land crossing. Right now? To Nicaraguan customs. We're at the frontera. Frontera. In Nicaragua. <laughs> well, we made it across the border and no issues. We're no in issues. Nicaragua, Nicky, baby. Nikki, woohoo! This is not my first time here. Been here twice before on surf trips to the Pacific side. But, you know, we're here to do shallow water flats fishing with flies. I would say, you know, the motivation behind it is coming to a place from a fishing standpoint that sees almost no pressure. There has been a couple of guys over the history of this part of Nicaragua that have come down and tarpon fish the rivers. You know, the permit thing is uh, kind of a guess. I've never been to Nicaragua before. From a permit fishing standpoint, it's a relatively untapped location. And that to me is exciting. It's going into the unknown, doing things that you don't know what the outcome is gonna be because that's what adventure is. What are we doing? Is it tortillas, cheese, onions? Pickled onion. Pickled onion. Cream. Oh, cream. So right now we are driving down to Pearl again, our second to final destination. We're passing through a little town. We're gonna get some dank grub to fuel <laughs> us for our six hour drive. Some local road snacks. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is how we do it in Nicaragua. Okay, see you guys. 
queso, tortilla, sour cream, onion. That's it. Six hours, and we'll see you in Pearl Lagoon. <laughs> we're pulling up to the east coast of Nicaragua, finally. We're emerging out of the jungle to the coast right now. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> We get to Casablanca and I already realized we're in the right place because we're walking down the street with Will Connolly and everyone in town is, hey, Will. Will knows everyone by name. Everyone's giving him hugs, handshakes. Everyone's fired up to be there. And that's when I realized, yeah, this is gonna be a lot of fun. First time I came was last year. It was, uh kind of just an exploratory trip and our other friend Eric Shores came down and I was looking just all over the Caribbean for new spots to go where I didn't think other people had been fishing for permit because they react to pressure dramatically and also who doesn't want to go to a new fishing spot but a lot of the guys fishing here before had been fishing for tarpon but the permit was kind of uh, less discovered, less fish for a lot of people in town didn't even know what they were. And, you know, I saw some, some keys off the coast and zoomed in. I didn't even know there were tarpon here at first. And then I reached out to Miss Dell, who we're at her house right now. It's amazing. They were like, yeah, we can take you fishing for tarpon. And I asked Brady finally about permit. And he's like, yeah, well, we could do that. Got in touch with the right people and that became our jump off point. We kind of got lucky on just dropping a dot on a map and found a pretty cool spot, I think. So we're kind of here to see, see if it all holds true. It might be a bust and a lot of, you know, fishing in general is being okay with that. It's more so, you know, the people you're with, the locals, the community. Um, that's what makes it special to me and the environment. Um, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Ted, get in there. No. <laughs> then we meet the crew, and the crew is hungry. They want to, to develop this fishery for sports fishermen. And it, it's evident in everything that they do. The way they take care of us, uh, the way they had everything dialed for us when we show up, where we're getting our food from, what provisions we need for the island. I was fired up to see that, that that's whose hands we were in. And then we go out to the Keys. Yo, I came for the Tonyas. Just kidding, I came for the permit. <laughs> out here headed to the Navy Station. Do a little checkout. Open water we go. What are we going to look for, Brady? Hey, fucking permit, man. <laughs> hey! Yeah. Welcome to our island. We will make the campfire. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, guys. Yeah. We've arrived! This is all fresh as cargo. Two missing. That's uh, the Navy's tax. You're asking for permit if you don't have a rod. We're finally out here on the flat. After all this travel, all this adventuring, day four since leaving Montana, we're here fishing. And it feels really, really good. Well, we have a lot of permits, you know, but we doesn't have like people come down to do those fish, you know. You guys would be like the, the third person ever come down here, man. We have a lot of flats. It's still a bunch that haven't been fished, you know. They're virgin, yeah, virgin grounds. Yeah, the fishing here is more is commercial fishing, you know. People most go fish to catch some fish and sell, you know. 
And then you have like Norma like just go fish to eat. And we, we don't have a lot of a lot of fishermen coming around here, you know. And most of the guys that come are spinning rod guys. So they don't f with the permits. They just f with the tarpons and the cood and other shit, you know. So the permits are right there waiting for you guys. <laughs> Doesn't get better. <laughs> it does not get any better than this, boys. Wow. Look at that icy Tonya. Uh -huh. Yo, I love Tonya. He's got a Tonya crop top at home, too. No, we got our guides here, Nation and Jaden. Nation and Jaden. Jaden. Captain Jaden. Yeah. Jayden, how old are you? How old are you? 18. 18. 18. Nation, how old are you? 18. He's 18. 18. You know, I've always been attracted to permit fishing because at a certain point within everyone's fishing career, you know, you want to go find the fish that's probably one of the most technical to catch on fly. Um, as far as the things they see, they're probably the most discerning fish. Their vision is better than most game fish that swim. They're just special. Even when they, you know, refuse your fly or when they, you don't even see one all day, you're in a beautiful place. Just seeing them in the water to me is, is pretty awesome. Like, you know, very few fish look like that. Very few fish have these crazy, you know, dorsal and and peck fins that are basically sickles coming off their bodies. So, you know, that's, that's pretty cool, just aesthetically. Permit fishing is my favorite kind of fishing, especially wade fishing. It's extremely visual. When you get hooked up on a permit, it's the best feeling ever. Kind of just chasing that high. <laughs> Well, look at that freaking raccoon eyes you got. Going. I know, boy. Fuck. Day one. Day one. Yo, the buff saved you though. A little, a, a little bit. You look like the Joker. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, look back. Son, we got a little hot on my face today. <laughs> Bumble clot. <laughs> did you see any permit? I didn't. Not any real permit, at least. Lots of permanence. A lot of fake permit. Imagination. Headed out for day number two of permit fishing. Still haven't seen a permit yet. It's been tough. The way we're trying to catch them is on foot, <laughs> and oh. it's not easy. They're, it's the hardest type of fishing you could possibly do, which makes it incredible. So. <laughs> Things need to align for that to happen, and we're just trying to wait, hit that window. Until they align. Until they align. Yes. This, these stars will. You gotta, you gotta hang around the hoop. That's the main rule. Hang around the hoop and it'll happen. Dude, those fish felt comfy. They felt real comfy. Like they were they weren't spooks. This almost stayed down. This was a big one. It came with big. The weather was just fucked. <laughs> lots of wind, lots of waves. It rained on and off. It was not ideal for permit fishing. You know, with permit you really want those calm conditions, the perfect tides. We were having these huge tidal swings and our windows were very short for targeting these fish. We just woke up. 
It's day number three permit fishing. Still down to zero permit. The weather seems to be getting a little more challenging. Still super windy. Clouds are rolling in. Our, hopefully our tides are starting to align and our weather can calm, but we don't, it's pretty tough to say right now. So we'll see what, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hey, we gotta keep trying for permit. That's the only way. The weather wasn't that great for us for permit fishing. A lot of wind, overcast, some rain at periods. So I knew what Will had told us previously, what he had experienced was true, but I wasn't sure we were gonna get the same, same show he did. So after a few days fishing, I was, I was slightly discouraged. I thought we might not be here long enough to find the window that we need. Went on a walk by myself, just needed to go explore, check out this area that we saw when we first landed on the island. And I initially thought there could be fish there. Oh my God. Oh my god. Oh my god, baby. Oh my god, permit on fly. Oh my god. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Words cannot describe how I feel right now. That was amazing. Sitting here at this point, chilling out, looking out at the ocean, and what do you know? School, probably six small permits just swam by. And it was just kind of a surreal experience. Um, you know, working so hard for a fish that means a lot to you and putting in all that time and effort and literally traveling all over the world just for that one fish. I'm just happy to be here with the boys drinking a beer around a fire. Cheers to that, Phelps. Let's, Let's go. go, boys. Cheers. <laughs> Let's go, boys. Yeah. The energy is electric. out of water and there's only one option. 
Hola, señor. <laughs> we haven't ah, had we any did. prime permit weather at all yet. And the wind. We've still been seeing them. Phelps still caught one. I know. But since we already got one in the bag, we're gonna f***ing head out and go maybe chase some giant jungle poon and then come back for some perm. Come back for some and perm. And see if this weather can subside, our tides can switch around and that's the game plan here. Oh, and we gotta, we gotta send Eddie off on his way now. I know. Eddie, no. Back to Estados Unidos for Eddie. Yeah. Wow. Not ideal. No. But y'all are gonna get, get the jungle pins. And that's a wrap, boys. Headed back to the mainland from the Keys. Hey, brother. Solid you four days. Guy. <laughs> 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 okay. Yo, we're headed deep into the jungle, far to the north, for real. Going into the remote areas. Oh, Will yeah. you ready? We're fing ready, man. <laughs> 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 we just broke down, spark pr plug burnt out, so we're gonna post up. We got plenty of food and water. Drifting into shore in the middle of nowhere in Nicaragua. Boat's broken down. What up? What up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did have some, <laughs> some issues with our boats and engines and stuff along the way, but Hey, that's to be expected in a place like this. So we made the best of it, drank beer while we broke down for about five hours in the middle of nowhere and hoping we could uh, get a spark plug and a wrench. And sure enough, we did. We had some other issues after that with boats and stuff too, but you got to take it all with a grain of salt. No pressure, Armando. Got her go she's it's working. Alright guys. Love you soon. Thank you. Our saviors. George and the boy. <laughs> Let's go. George That's and Rojo. Yeah. Jungle. Jungle. Yeah. We fix it. So we went over to Cara. There was a generator that powered all the electricity in town. There's no like power lines going there, no phone lines. It's just like basically a town just plopped in the middle of the jungle. And you can only get there by boat, which is also really cool. There's no roads, no cars. The whole town, there's only one sidewalk. Like that's it. It's just completely separate from where we were permit fishing. I mean, you're in a jungle, you're fishing a river. Even the people there are different speak a completely different language that most people in Nicaragua can't, can't speak and can hardly understand. Yo, Veli. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Good. Good to see you. 
Coming here is pretty insane. Mm -hmm. Just seeing how uninhabited this landscape is. There's no houses, no villages, except for this one. A little breakdown on the way, but we made it before sunset. One of the best melons I've had. Oh yeah. Morning jungle poon. Three twenty two in the morning. Oh my god, bro. Armando, Armando. Oh. They're fing blitzing these mullets. Yeah, pull that up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo, that would have been a sick shot, bro. Dude, I got it. Yo. <laughs> Armando, action, action, action. Action, 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 action. Action, action. <laughs> Yep. That's what we want to see right there, baby. Yeah. Fuck, oh, bro. Come on, and we gotta get a little closer. Yo. Dude. Yo. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, keep him tight, keep him tight. First time tarpon fishing and I was able to hook two and landed one. 
And uh, by far the biggest fish I ever hooked doesn't, <laughs> I don't think brown trout get that big. <laughs> We've been fishing pretty hard for the past few days. Coming to a remote location like this, it's important to have a good selection of flies, especially when you don't fully understand the fishery that you're going to. One of our friends, Doug McKnight, he's one of the best fly tires in the world. He tied us a lot of flies that we could experiment with and try down here that he kind of designed based on what he thought this fishery would be like. Sitting here looking at some of the fly patterns that we've been using that have been really successful for us. These patterns here, are meant to imitate mullet, which have been the main food source we found down here. This one's been extremely effective for us, the chartreuse and white. Um, it's based on the home invader pattern that Doug ties for pretty much any fish that eats any other fish. Another one that's extremely effective down here is a black and red. When it's dark, go dark. Here's one of the bigger mullet flies. You can use a really big fly for the tarpon down here because they're eating mullet that are, you know, nine, 10 inches sometimes. Some of the permit flies we've been using down here, this is Doug's fly, the danger muffin. It's commercially tied by Umqua. Doug ties them himself as well. Um, we've got a number of variations in color on the danger muffin right here. The green, this is actually kind of a custom with some purple and brown. The tingham right here. It's one of my favorite flies for fishing in turtle grass in like Mexico, Belize. These are called the crimp. You can use it as a crab, you could use it as a shrimp. That's just a quick overview of the flies we've been using while we're down here. We've been out here tarpon fishing with Armando Nation and the boys, Brady, Jaden, for a few days. Our weather's starting to shape up and look good to go back out for a little permit redemption for a big dog. So we're gonna head back down and uh, get out there and see what we can do. <laughs> Got him. Permit. The big one. 